It's pretty well known in the Land Rover community that the ignition switch on the early Discovery and the Range Rover is terrible to say the least. There are a lot of forum posts about it and if you just search the internet for Land Rover Discovery broken key, you'll find no shortage of problems. Sometimes the key gets stuck in the ignition or it won't turn or in my case completely breaks off in the lock cylinder leaving me stranded in front of the Wind dixie in the rain on Memorial Day weekend. I trailered the car home and I replaced the lock cylinder with a used one from eBay but the replacement key had some issues too. Since this thing spends 99% of its life on the beach, I needed to do something before me or my wife ended up getting stranded because a tow off the beach is not a cheap thing. This was one of the best mods I've done to a vehicle in a really long time. You could still lock the truck with the key fob, but you don't have to mess around with a key that struggles to turn. The ignition switch harness on a 2002 Discovery is pretty straightforward and this process applies to most older vehicles that don't have an immobilizer. Before I did any work actually on the vehicle, the process started at my kitchen counter with the ignition switch and the harness. I used the diagram that I found online and I cycled through the different key positions and I just double checked that the diagram actually matched up with my ignition switch. All it took was a multimeter set on continuity mode. To save a few bucks on the cost of switches, I bought a pre-wired switch panel so now I have some switches for future projects. Links to everything used in this video are in the description, including a few things I wish I knew about before. You have a lot of flexibility with how you can make the lights on the switch work, so I chose to have the lower and the upper lights of the switch come on when you activate them. The switch for the start button is a momentary rocker switch. It resets itself back to a resting position the same way your key does when you turn on the ignition. I don't want the ability for the starter to be turned on without at least one of these switches. So I'm gonna have it set so that you have to have the first switch on before you can hit the starter. The way that I initially thought I was gonna wire up the switches is kind of different than the way I ended up wiring it. So the easiest way to follow along is to print out this wiring diagram that I drew up and use it for reference. You can find it on my website, lucidautoworks.com, and as it's shown, it'll give you the exact same results as this video. If you're handy with wiring, you can use the switch pinout on the top right of the diagram to configure your setup any way you'd like. I need to check one thing that's gonna be crucial to getting this setup working. According to what I read online, here is your ignition plug. That brown wire on the end, this big fat brown wire right there, that's supposed to be your constant. So there must be 12 volts to this with the key off. If there's not, this whole thing isn't gonna work. And I got it set up in a way where hopefully you can see we're at zero volts right now. For a ground, I'm just gonna try to use the the metal frame of the dash. Hopefully that is grounded. And yep, we got 12.42 volts. So we're good to go. That's a constant. That also tells me that somewhere in this metal framework is a decent ground for running my ground for my lights. I've got way more than what's needed. I'm gonna go ahead and get this all installed have this come through the dash and then do any of my crimping and butt connecting over underneath the dash while it's in position just because I didn't want to try to get the length right and then you know have to fish things through so looking at it now I've got the white is going to my auxiliary power the yellow is going to be I'm going to take the two the ones that need to go together, the yellow and the white from the ignition switch harness, and they're gonna splice together to this one. And then I've got the brown, the constant, and the red goes to the start signal. So that's connected to this last switch. Uh, oh, and then the ground, ground is separate in case, not sure exactly where I'm gonna ground it. So 
we'll see once I get it in there. So let's uh, put it in there and I will uh, start doing the finished wiring. I did have to make more room in the dash insert for the wires to pass through. So I just took advantage of the already broken corner and opened it up with a set of wire cutters. For the lighting ground, I just used this e-torx bolt that was under the dash. Now, I'm generally not a fan of butt connectors, but this style of uninsulated connector works a whole lot better than your standard red, blue, or yellow insulated butt connector does. For the yellow wire that connects to the white and the yellow, I made a staggered connection to keep the packaging tight. Okay, my wiring is done and it's time to test it out. I tried to offset my splices to make the wrap a little neater when I tape it all up. I'm leaving it open for now just in case I notice there's any problems. Switch panel is in, added a couple stickers. So now in theory, the starter shouldn't work unless I hit that first. I have the battery disconnected just from when I was working, you know, just in case. So let's um, connect the battery and give this a go. Definitely a little nervous, you know, shit can go wrong, but let's go battery on. Nothing's on fire yet. None of the wires are hot. All right, we should be good. If I hit start, nothing should happen, but we'll see. Nope, nothing happens, okay. So let's see if a light comes on with on. And we should get like ding. Now let's see what happens when ignition goes on. Okay, that's where I get my ding. So something, I'm assuming this, once the ECU powers up. Now this should, should work. Let's see. Yep. All right, sweet. I'm not sure if this is going to go into gear or not. I don't know how the neutral safety switch or the interlock. Oh, it's going to work. Nice, all right, so now all I have to do is completely get rid of the lock cylinder so I don't, yeah, see the steering wheel will lock unless I get the lock cylinder out. So yeah, let me let me see about turning it off. Now off should really just be um, ignition to off. It is, and now I still have power. So one click will be like key on, two clicks, ECU on, fuel pump, all that stuff. And then this is going to be the start. Awesome. So now I just have to, let me see if I can get you in there. I got to get these two guys off. If you want to check out my other video, I'll put a link in the description on how you remove stuff like that. And then pretty much I can remove the whole lock cylinder and that's going to fix the, you know, the fact that I can't steer the wheel right now. All right. I've got the lock cylinder completely out. I can move the steering wheel without it locking in place. You can see there are a couple connectors. I wasn't sure if they were going to matter for anything. This one's like the light for around the ignition, uh, the keys. I don't know exactly what that one is, but it doesn't matter because if I go, it works. Um, so I did confirm this is like having the key on because you can see I have a, a pressure gauge up there and watch what happens. I'll, I'll turn this off and you can see it starts to drop down because that's set to my accessory position. And then turn it back on, starts to go back up. Let me uh, wrap these, button this all back up, and I'll get back with you. I got the dash all put together, buttoned up. It's a nice clean install. It's like nothing ever happened. You can find the switch surround on Etsy. It's from a UK seller. You can also go on Thingiverse and 3D print your own. This one's done in ASA. I'll leave a link in the description to all of the switches, the surround, all the stuff I used. Just, you know, don't forget to be careful. You're working with electronics, so disconnect the battery, work one wire at a time. If you have any questions, go down in the comments and just ask them to me. I'll run over the whole thing with you. And if you like Land Rover stuff, I should have some more Land Rover videos coming out soon. Subscribe for more, and I'll see you in the next one.